happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to another Adobe Live with myself, Tony Harmer, and my buddy, Tim Mervis. It's hey, me. Tim. Hey, Tony. Yes. Good so afternoon, exciting. good morning, good evening, good night. All of the above, the all of the above, somewhere in the world, <laughs> absolutely. And normally at this point, Tim, you know what I'd be saying right now? And you know what I'd be I'd showing be saying, right now? Absolutely, this is true. Uh, normally, right at this particular moment, I'd be saying, so if you're watching on YouTube, that's fine. But come along to Behance and join us there in the chat. But today, the chat is not playing with us on Behance. So today, the chat you actually want is on YouTube. And I can see some of our good friends are in here already, Tim. But if you're watching this on Behance, if you have clicked on yeah. the Behance link, you can just hover over the video and you can click either on the title or on the, the YouTube icon down in this corner. And then you can get straight to the YouTube version and chat with us. And oh, Gareth is joining us. Gareth, this is just the stream oh, for you. We have to wait no for you. Chat, chat after effects. <laughs> Well, we are doing we are doing some After Effects today. This is very very true, and we're also and we're keeping it friendly for everybody as well. So, uh, which is really good because what we really want are people to try out uh, After Effects. People mm -hmm. who are perhaps at the moment, you know, getting their work done and thinking, what else could I do in InDesign or Illustrator? And just thinking, oh, well, can I open up After Effects and play with it? And the answer is yes, you can. Yes. Yes. All right. So, so we're doing it. What in two bits, aren't we? Yeah, what are we working on today? We have kept the so, um, title of the title sequence masterclass rather vague, but what's um, on purpose? What are we doing today? <laughs> so, um, what I'm going to do is, Tim, is I'm going to put on my new production hat ready for uh, today, so I can show how excited every that I uh, that uh, everyone's here. Super good. There we are. <laughs> so this is the hat I wear to really important meetings, like the one I've just had this week with um, the people from TTV, Tony Tim Vision. Yeah, <gasps> amazing. They actually want us to do a, site, a title sequence for their top line sci-fi drama called Dr. Woe. Dr. Woe, just quickly. Dr. Woe. Um, is the audio fine? Just can you please write in the chat? Apparently Gareth is having some issues or it could be just him. Let me know if anything <gasps> is. All right. Nope. Sean says good here. All right. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so we ought to say hello to some of our friends. Well, of yes. course Gareth is here. So there we are, uh, which is great. And people are getting it. Oliver's here as well. I think Caroline was in first off, actually. Hey, Caroline. Stuart's here. <gasps> We've also got Jackie. And we've also got Angus. I don't know why I'm singing everybody's name, but there we are. Why not? I'm just going to go with it. Sean Cosell. Uh, imaginary. So that's Sandrine to everyone else. And uh, yeah, I think I caught everybody then. I think I've done it. Successful. Nice. Very good. Tony Tim TV. And I'm hoping <laughs> that we get to get away with, I mean, that we actually get to do... <laughs> We get to do more of these in the future because I think we've come up with a corker and I think you're going to have real good fun uh, today. And uh, Sandrine's already thanking you for the product, product placement. Yeah, I hate and, product placement in live oh, streams. Oh, me as well, man. I can't throw it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Um, anyway, right, moving on. So you're starting, I think, aren't you? Well, you're yes. You're going to be working on the theme. I will be working on the new theme for Dr. Woe. Dr. Woe. Working title was Professor How yep. and Mr. Y. Yep. Um, yep. Surgical but... assistant when? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, Tony has asked me to work on a theme tune that's, um, well, hopefully close to a certain original not TV series. Not infringing anybody's rights. Yeah, but not infringing any copyright, <laughs> uh, copyrights. So I've already prepared one because you don't want me uh, sitting here thinking of a tune for two hours. It would be a boring masterclass. So instead, we'll just very quickly jump into audition and we will do some um, minor automation to the already finished tracks. And then I can send it over to Tony and Tony will make sure to use that track in the I certainly will. In After Effects in the best way possible, hopefully. So should yes. I start, or do you want to um, dive into the graphics first and I can... 
But yeah. I'm just I'm just wondering if I should actually maybe start a couple of things. Yeah, and I think then that's you take over and then come back to me yes. because Gareth Gareth is 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 needing a brown bag to breathe <laughs> into. <laughs> Oh, so what right. I'll do then, uh, I think you've got my screen already, yes. right? So push my screen forward, my good friend, and we'll, yes. we'll begin. So uh, I need to build a few things here. I'm going to build them from scratch. Now, while I uh, – actually, on this machine, I don't think I have uh, any Red Giant stuff on this machine or anything else. I don't, so that's really good. Because what I want to do is do everything here that is After Effects native for you. Okay, so uh, you, you can go ahead and you can re-watch this stream later on. Yeah, and then you can work through what I'm doing with, what I'm doing most of this with anyway. You won't have access to the footage that I'm using later, but you will be able to do something. So first of all then, what I need just here uh, is I need some space. Space, man. You know, hands, face, space, all of that stuff. Space. Uh, so what I'm going to- Oh no, wrong space, filter. We need space. And uh, <laughs> not the Tim North- Space. Tony, space. Like, subscriptions, space. Oh, that was different. That was good space. Of course, there wouldn't be any echoes in space. All sound. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks what for that. I'm, to do, I'm actually going to start out with a new solid. In fact, I'm going to be using a few solids just here, and I'm going to call this one space solid. So a solid is basically just a flat color thing, and you can do stuff with it, which is really, really interesting. Okay, so I've got this at 1080p at 30 frames a second just here, and I don't actually need the full time span here. I only need about six seconds. So all I'm going to do is in the duration field is type 6000, like so, and that will then be converted across to base 30 and give me six seconds of footage time. I'm going to drag um, my new solid in here. So here comes space solid right into uh, its composition. Oh, I've actually gone straight into that, so we'll start that again. Let's just go, you'll see that later, and create a new composition here. We'll call that one space, like so, and then we'll drag space solid in. Oh, I think I actually did it as a comp, doesn't matter. Uh, right, good, there we are. Let me do that again then for a proper solid. I'll tell you, it's been a morning. There we go, space, like that, and it can be black, like so. It's because Gareth's putting on the pressure. Gareth's saying, come on, get on with it, get on with it, get on with it. Gareth's like, ah, 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 ah. we'll have to get <laughs> you on one day, Gareth, that'd be great. He's salivating, he absolutely is. Oh. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that one, I think, just here, okay? And then I'm going to add an effect to this, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a ball action, which creates small ball things that we can use black so okay so that's, um, i need to that's a one minute yeah, um composition not a six second one by the way gareth says it is it's because i did i did too many too many too many too many too many i did thanks gareth honestly it has been a morning there we go now it's a six second uh thingy there you go i did six thousand not six hundred naughty tony anyway moving on Right, so I'm going to introduce some scatterage and actually also I'm going to change the nature of this comp now. I'm going to make it white. Ooh, my ambient mm -hmm. sound suddenly went off. <laughs> Weird. There we go. Let's make that white so you can see it. Here we are. Right, so I'm going to scatter some of these things about just by changing this scatter control, strangely enough. Uh, I'm going to come down a bit here and change the grid spacing. And I'm also going to change the size of the balls just here they are too big so here we are that's a little bit more space like i only want something that's vaguely uh, space like and to be honest if you actually work at this you can get it so it looks very very space like can you see how the balls there all just moving and mm. scattering uh, i can change their rotation on a number of axes okay but i'm going to choose xz just here and so i can rotate them around like so so look at that looks like an orbit of those so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keyframe that so i need to click on the stopwatch just here my playhead is at the beginning and if i move across a bit i only want it to be gentle movement so it's not going to go that far right but if i go like so something like that and then come back here and hit the space bar 
Then we've got that nice gentle piece of motion just there. And what I might do, Tim, is I might actually add a nebula into that a bit later on. Yes. I think I may do that. I may add a nebula in Still later on. I might do that actually while you're doing your uh, stuff there. Gareth is enjoying it. So Stuart is asking, uh, how do you change the timeline from frames to seconds? Hmm. Looks like you have it as uh, some frames. Well, it does. It is because it's at that sort of level of magnification I see. at the moment. However, if I had something that was longer than six seconds, it would automatically change across into minutes from there. Um, but you can uh, actually change the timeline when you create the comp as well, I think. I uh, can't remember now, but just off the top of my head, I just always just do doo doo and it just does it. So but there we are. Right, so I've got some space, which is really good. I'm going to create a new comp, so you'll find that in just a second here. Okay, so what I can do, oh, here, um, actually, you can change the number of frames per second and all of that stuff. So this is going to be um, full title, just here, like so. So this will be the whole thing. This is going to be 35 seconds long, so that is definitely 35,000 uh, this time, I think. Nope. Yeah, 35,000, not 3,500, uh, like so, and hit OK. Now you'll see that I've got something more than just the frames just there. But if I zoom in, who was it asking? Stuart, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I zoomed in just here, you'll see it suddenly changes to frames when it gets down to that level of, uh, of thing. So I can go to my project here, and I can bring space in because I have that like so. So there's my space right at the beginning only needs to be short because then we're going to move into the vortex, Tim. <gasps> into the three minute long vortex. No, four minute long. Three minute long. No, yeah, something like that. Three minute, three and a half minute vortex. It's quite a long vortex, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Carolyn is asking, anyway. Gareth, are you the only one who liked the YouTube video? Because we had one like. <laughs> now we have three. <laughs> oh, so we do. Go and, go and click on that like thing right now so we keep our jobs till next week. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're watching this on Behance, come on over to YouTube. Yes, I said that right. Come on over to YouTube because Behance chat oh. isn't working today. Hover over the video, click on the title. Right, hang on a minute. No, um... Sandrine wants to know what a time code is, right? So it's the way that you measure frames. So video footage is in a certain number of frames per second. Yeah, we're using 30 frames per second here. So that's 30 images displayed to you in every second. And that's what that time code gives us. It tells us how many hours, minutes, seconds, and frames have elapsed. And in fact, when we get into here at the moment. So this thing here called the CTI, the current time indicator at the top or the playhead, you might call it that if you come from uh, animate. That tells us where we are in time. And you can see just on the left hand side here, right? There's no hours uh, here, no uh, minutes at the moment. I'm at 59 seconds and 12 frames. And hopefully that helps. Yeah, so there we are. Right, and uh, oh man, I've got so much reading to do up on there. Anyway, right, let's get back to our vortex business because we need some vortex going on. So from space, yeah, we are going to go straight into the vortex from there, okay? And I'm going to actually create the texture for the vortex first. So I'm gonna do Command N here to create a new composition, okay? And what I'm going to call this is I'm going to call this vortex, like so, okay, and texture. This will be the vortex texture, first of all, right? Now, there's bonus points for the mistake I make in about 10 minutes or so uh, down the line, which would be quite funny for all of us, but it will happen because it happens every time I do it. And I just forget because I'm so used to blatting everything through at 1080p that I forget to change this. But what I'm gonna do here is, I don't want this at 1920, 1080, no, no, no. I want it at 1920 by 20,000. Ooh, there we go. Mm, mm, 20,000 of those good old square pixels at 30 frames a second. And this actually does need to be at that length, three minutes 50. So there we are. So I'm gonna say, 
Okay. And this is what I get. Very, very, very narrow composition like so. I'm going to zoom in on some of that narrow composition for you. Okay, so that you can actually see it. There we go. And it's difficult to keep track of the chat out of one eye. Tim, can you keep track of the chat for a minute? Yes, of course. Thanks, Governor. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce another solid. Now, I could reuse the one I got earlier, I suppose, from my solids folder. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to drag that space solid in here. Oh, no, of course, it's the wrong size, so I can't. So I'll undo that. New solid, Command Y or Control Y, or you can go to the layer menu, New and Solid from there. And I'm going to hit this button, it says Make Comp Size. Even though the numbers are already here at the top, I'm still going to do it just so you know it actually happens. Okay, and I'll change the color here to black as well, just by clicking on that little swatch just there. Okay, so now I've got my dark gray solid because it's not really black that's after effects taunting me yeah taunting me with its stuff i'm going to get another effect just here so i'm going to go to the effect menu and wow this looks so different without my stuff on it <laughs> so 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 crazy uh, in fact you know what? i'm going to search it over here cause just to make it easy i'm used to a whole bunch of rg things popping up uh, in here. So I actually want some fractal noise just here. Here's some fractal noise down at the bottom. And I'm going to drag that in and drop it onto the solid just there. Or you can do that in the timeline as well if you've got other things in the way. And it will start to generate some fractal noise. This is what it looks like. And Jackie asks, do you have to create a new composition for each element? No, not really. Um, it's uh, You can use different compositions as layers, and there are certain advantages to having things separately. But as you'll see when we get into actually completing the sequence, right, that, um, no, things can have their own layers. So later on, we'll be adding some type layers. 8-bit, um, uh, Gareth. And <laughs> just answering questions in flow. I just saw something out the corner of my eye tagged for me, but there you are. Yeah. Hmm. So... Uh, Yes. Anyway, you don't have to have them all as compositions. It's Sometimes it's functionally good to do that. Right, so now I need to come into this panel just here. Now, one of the things I can do, which may help you uh, viewing it, right, is by hitting the tilde key when I'm over a panel here in After Effects. And normally, that actually takes it, there you go, takes it up. Of course, it's not improving the size, but just showing you where I'm actually working just here. So what I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose the type of noise that it's going to generate. Now, I want this to be cloudy. If you're trying this out yourself, there's nothing wrong with trying all of the other ones there. Just give them a go. Have fun. See which thing works for you. But I'm going to use cloudy. And then I need to work on the noise type. Now, here actually is probably some benefit for me showing you both. So this is what cloudy looks like to start off with being all computer generated and all of that stuff. I'm gonna change the way it does that generation by switching to spline, which is one of the methods here. Again, you can try all of these out for yourself. You'll have loads of fun with it. Here's spline and let it re-render. And you can see now that's much more puffy, puffy, cloudy. Uh, I am going to invert that, okay? So I'm going to get some of those bands that I want in my vortex just there. Those are the things that are gonna do the real uh, magic for me as well. Okay, and uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, Gareth is also asking about the effects and things. I'm trying to keep everything almost at the lowest common denominator, Gareth, for the minute because, you know, pushing all of this stuff live, working on here, all of that, just all of that. It's good stuff. I feel like this is just for Gareth <laughs> <laughs> at the moment, but there you go, which of course it's not. It's for you because I love you. There you go. Right, so, uh, and what I'm going to do then, you're welcome. Uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to the transform settings here, and I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. Let's make it a bit bigger. Uh, let's make it about, that big's pretty good, I think. Mm, maybe a little bit smaller, but no, I think I'll work with that one for now. Uh, and then here, I've got some sub settings. Now, what's happening here? is it's creating one fractal on top, and then there's sort of some being created underneath as well. So the clouds actually have some depth. So this allows me uh, to control those. So what I'm going to do is, and I need to zoom out to the whole thing, 
So I'm just going to hold down shift here and hit Y. OK, because this is where the offset for the stuff underneath is being generated. And I'm going to change that. OK, I only want to change it on one axis. I just want it to change it on the Y axis here. So I'm coming down to this field, sub offset. The first set of values is for the X axis and the second one is for the Y axis. So I'm just going to start that moving so you can see that small dot moving down. And I actually want that to go right off the edge of the comp here. So I think I'm going to go for 22,000 just there like so and hit return. Now, if I zoom out a tad, you can see that point is down there. I just want it to all come back to that. Stuart, who's somebody's a motion designer. Watch later, Oxford, Miss Lumbee Hearts. 104, Tony's only talking to Gareth. <laughs> I'm not, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, you, <laughs> you. I'll find where the lens is on this one. <laughs> uh, and I also want to change the uh, evolution here. Now, I want to actually get After Effects to work that out, and I want it to speed it up. So you can use uh, small bits of script here in After Effects, okay, to work with. And what I'm going to do is come to the time stopwatch just here, and I'm going to hold down the Option key or Alt key, and click on that, okay, and that allows me to add a tiny bit of script. You always so have this weird expression on your face, Tony. Yes, of course. Because <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, Tim, I don't do that very often, right? <laughs> uh, so time is the particular property I'm after. I'm then much. going to multiply that, right? So asterisk for multiplication, and then I'm going to type 150. Now, these days in After Effects, you don't have to do things like terminate lines with semicolons. It doesn't require you to do that. But I'm old school, so I still put a semicolon on the end. And then to commit that, you need to use enter rather than return, because return will just give you a new line. OK, so that's now got some speed associated with it as well. Good. I still... Still keep thinking we've only got an hour, and I rush forward thinking, oh, 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 about 60 hour. minutes left. Yeah, that's enough. 98% <laughs> so, Yes, yeah, true, true, true. When you've got stuff to do as well. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to collapse this layer here, and then I'm going to duplicate it. So, Command D uh, or Control D to duplicate it. I am then going to transform it. So, I think I'll just right click on that, choose Transform, and I'm going to flip that horizontally. And in case you're wondering, I'm going well, to be able to show you in a bit much better, why Tony. I'm doing this. It does. It's, it's a massive improvement. <laughs> in, ca in case you're wondering why I'm doing that, it's because I'm trying to avoid a seam. So where this wraps around itself, which is what's going to happen to create the vortex that we're seeing, yeah, okay, I'm trying to avoid a little seam up here. Right, by masking this one out, which is exactly what I'm going to do just now. So I'm going to select my pen tool here. And because I have a layer active, it's going to draw me a mask path. Now, I'll just see if I can zoom in just a tad here. OK, let's go to 33% and see where we are. No, that didn't work at all. OK, great. And what I could do is actually maximize that a bit. And then with my pen tool, I'm just going to draw something like this. OK, so I'm just drawing some ziggity, zaggity lines. I've got no rhyme or reason to any of those things. The like cool so. thing about um, the generate noise filter in Photoshop is if you have a width or height of um, a power of two, so um, two, four, eight, 1024, anything like that, it becomes uh, seamless. Yep. That doesn't happen That's... with this one, does it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> At least I believe not. So I've never done, you know, I've never tried, I don't think. And we won't works. try it today. No, we won't. we're not going to try it right now. That's for sure. That's your homework. Right. So I've drawn this mask path. So that's going to hide some of that. And if I turn off the layer underneath, you can see what is being hidden just there. So just so it's clearer, right, what I'm doing here is I'm taking, I've flipped it over, remember, so... Here's my straight one. Here's my flipped over copy. So these are both the same on this side. And so what I want to do is just mask out all of this stuff here. I'm using my hands as a metaphor. I can't believe I'm doing this uh, for this. But I'm going to mask out all of the things apart from my pinky. 
just there, right? So to do that, what I need to do is invert the mask, which is actually convenient because it is already. So that's kind of good uh, on there. And I am going to tap F on my keyboard to access the feather. And I'm going to feather that sucker. There we go. Like so. That will be an email. <laughs> Did you say sucker when you <laughs> say, oh, I am going to feather that sucker? Did you no, say it I'm again? Either. Twice? <laughs> no. I don't want any more emails. <laughs> uh, Joel says, will you use some CC cylinder? No spoilers, Joel. Oh, come on, Joel. You've watched this before. You are a time traveller. <laughs> You know, he just put a minus in from in front of the time expression. That's how you time travel. Did you know this that? This is it. This technique, by the way, this probably the, the the there are tons of different ways of doing this. Tons, and uh, and so it's not difficult to find on the tube of views either. But seeing as you're here now, watching it now, might as well go with this one, huh? And then make it your own by adding your own uh, bits in. So there we go. So there we go. I've got both of those things present now. That should all be working like so. Just going to double check. Uh, I didn't invert it. There we are. There we are. So that's good. I forgot. I was in, I was looking at the noise there. So I needed to invert it just down here. Let me turn the other bit off again. There Let's you go. go make See some that? noise. Yeah. Let's go make some noise. So I need another comp just now. So command N for another comp. And I could just hit return, but I'd be making the mistake that I said I sometimes make. I'm not going to do that this time. So 1080 for that. <laughs> like that. And this comp I am going to call Vortex. So I've got Vortex text jar. And now I'm going to call this Vortex, like so. Let's bring that so you can see the whole thing. I'll go to my project panel just here. And I'm going to drag in Vortex texture like that boof here it comes right now i've got that i'm going to get my pen tool here oh, not my pen tool my selection tool to select that i'm going to search for an effect let's see if we can guess what effect that might be joel star wipe star wipe page turn <laughs> page turn <laughs> i love that effect i use that all the time right okay uh probably not in the way it's prescribed but i do use it <laughs> Uh, CC cylinder, so I'm going to drag that in like so, and hey presto, it becomes a cylinder that we are looking at as if you would look at it like this. There you go, looking at a cylinder, sort of, just there. Okay, so with that, I am going to go into the transform properties uh, for this. Okay, I'll go into rotation just here, and I'm going to rotate on the x-axis 90 degrees. Like that. And now we're looking into the cylinder. Is this making sense now? Yes. This is very good. Save the lens flares for me. I'm not going to put lens flare on this one, uh, Sean. I'm just going to leave the gap at the end, to be perfectly honest. All right. So there you are. Now I've got that uh, just like so. Okay, so the texture is there. It's rotated in a new place. Uh, that's good for the way that is just at the moment. But now we need to change something else. Now, what you're looking at here through this viewport is you're looking through the After Effects default camera. Yeah, If you're used to 3D, uh, 3D scenes have a default camera. So this has a default camera as well. But we're going to introduce a new one to change the parameters of it. So <laughs> I just read what's in the chat and I'm ignoring it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to come down here to layer. I'm going to choose new and then I'm going to choose camera. OK, Laxo. Uh, I don't need to name this camera because it's going to be the only camera that what I am using. I think I will start off with a preset of 24 oh, millimeters. Let's go. I didn't say anything. Did you hear that, Tim? Was that How 9000? It was How 9000. I'm sorry, two Dave. How 9000s in here. One from the shopping company and one from Apple. But anyway, right, so I've got that. and um, That's just fine just for the minute. I'm just going to make sure that depth of field is off because I don't need it. I don't think I really need lock to zoom either, actually. Uh, so I'm going to turn it off just for the moment. Right, now it's here. I'm going to double click on it to actually access its properties and change some things over time. So I'm right at the beginning of the sequence. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen out my angle of view madly. 
like something like that. There you go. You're sort of just about to be bore into the vortex at that particular point. Okay, then I could actually do that from in here. Let's do it from in here. So we'll do with the camera controls just here. So I'm going to stopwatch that so that I can keyframe it. And I'm going to come up to this point here and add another keyframe. So I'm just going to change my view. You can see this like so. There we are. So zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. Do a bit more zooming in because it's got three and a half minutes to do it. So it's not going to do it very quickly, which is just fine. Now I could try uh, for playing that just here and it's not behaving. So we'll just hit that from up here. Do, do, do. Very weird. Well, we're not going to play that, Tim. So I'll just scrub through. All right. You see that light. So I can fix that while you're doing the audio thing. Yeah. What I could also do is add a little bit of rotation in just to give this something. So we're sort of in space. Uh, we're unstable as we're drawn into this massive great energy field uh, just here. So I think I'm also going to go for a little bit of just transform rotation here and I will go mm, not X rotation. Uh, I need to go kind of Z rotation, I think. Yeah, do a bit of Z rotation. So we'll go ahead and keyframe that. So we're going to keyframe that. Let's go to uh, a little way along like so and rotate the camera around a bit. And then we'll go back away from there. Just a bit more and we will rotate the camera. It's going to spin the other way wildly anyway. We can always space these out slightly differently and we'll also ease them slightly differently. Now, easing is something that's relatively easy to explain. If you get into your car, I'm using a pencil sharpener here this time to a substitution for a car. If you get into your car and start to drive along the street, my arm is playing the role of the street this time. Thank you very much, arm. You don't automatically go to 30 miles an hour, right? Not, not zero to warp eight. You kind of put your foot on the accelerator and gently climb until you're at that velocity. That is easing in. At the distance here on my elbow, there's some traffic lights. And as you're going along, they just turned red. And so you slow down into that. That's easing out. That's easing out explained using a pencil sharpener as a car yeah, and my arm as a road. I'm here all week. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> So we can change this. We've got this fab thing in After Effects that is called Easy Ease that takes care of most of those things for you. You just go to right click. Uh, OK, so select a range of keyframes. Let me do that again so you can see it. So I can just go around these. Right. Then I can right click and go keyframe assistant and Easy Ease. And that's it. You'll notice the keyframes look slightly different. And that's the way you can tell. Right. That they are, in fact, using the Easy Ease. OK, so now what I can do is try that for playing. Why aren't you playing? This is very interesting. I might have to reboot After Effects while we're out and about, Tim. Anyway, it's not going to move that quickly because obviously I'm advancing this myself and I don't quite know why that is. Oh, it is. It's just doing it very, very slowly because it's rendering each and every frame. Mm, but, I see. Well, yeah, with a composition the size of 22,000, I wouldn't expect it to run super in there. fast. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's going to be big. Fortunately for us, though, Tim, I had the foresight to go ahead and render out a copy uh, what I needed. You're crazy, so, Tony. You're crazy. I know. I know. People say this. They say, Tony, you're crazy. I don't know why they say it like that from Cambridge, but anyway, they do. And uh, yes, so it is. It's choking away doing all of those frames while we're broadcasting this at the same time and whatever else. But that is essentially it. if I try and advance this fairly slowly, you can see that the vortex there is whirring away and uh, what i could do is when we come back or right now in fact if i go ahead and bring that into the project because uh, that's what i made earlier your sound aren't you yeah i'm just going to bring in here this one i made earlier okay and i'll make a composition out of this vortex so i've just right clicked on it chose new comp from selection like so so this is another vortex uh, one just here but this has a movie in it so this is rendered so let's have a quick look at this one Ooh, very so nice see how that one works i've just realized that's a 30 second shot but anyway not to worry we can figure that out yeah why should it be three minutes anyway that is too long 
I got my numbers all around my head. It's supposed to be 35 seconds, not three minutes 50. Well, I no, said to you, sorry, three Tim. minutes 50. And you said, yeah, yeah, that's fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not. Sorry, Tim. I told you. So <laughs> it is? Okay. This morning was gross. Right. Anyway, right. So there you go. That's that footage rendered out. I will remedy all of that in just a second. One of the things I do like to add to enhance this, you know, uh, from the effects when you're not actually doing this out uh, live and you're trying to get it to do it, okay, is to come down and choose uh, something like one of the generated effects here, like CC Light Burst, which adds quite a bit to it. Now, if I do that, you can see straight away, even though it's only rendering that on the frame that we've got there, that that suddenly has a whole lot more sparkle to it. But that does indeed increase uh, the rendering time on that as well. So, but something like that. And uh, I think when we come back to mine, Tim, I will have corrected the three minutes, 50 seconds from this morning. Honestly, what a day. Um, <laughs> now we're going super speed. Look at that. <laughs> and yeah, and then we'll put some color into it. And then we're going to add some other things as well. So I'll hand over to you, Tim, and I'll just fix this side and then we'll come back to it. I didn't have a star wipe for this stream, but at least I did have the iris wipe. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Another favorite one of mine. <laughs> lordy, right. lordy, lordy. Well, let's... It's no uh, lens flare though, is it? <laughs> I, could I add a lens? No, uh, okay. Mustn't get distracted. So let's uh, iris wipe over to my screen. Oop. Yes. Going to use that always now. <laughs> That's that so cursor cool. is mighty big. That's interesting. It's the biggest cursor I've ever seen. Um, anyway, so I have been working on um, soundtrack. And first things first, I'd like to apologize for the German interface because I didn't expect to, um, me to actually show something today. So, um, yeah, apologies for the German Oh, sorry. see that it's misaligned. Hang on. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, so I have created a multi-track, and if you want to know how to import that into Adobe Audition, you can watch last week's uh, masterclass with uh, yours truly, um, where I explained everything you need to know, how to multi-track record, how to import your files, and how to work with that. And today, um, I would like to do some automation because um, some of the tracks in here, they should start out being very quiet, but they're a bit loud. So perhaps we can do some fade-ins, some fade-outs, some minor developments here and there. That would be nice. Um, so first things first, let's have a listen through, um, the, through the soundtrack and... Uh, Hopefully it shouldn't be too loud. Let's just see if it's coming through on stream. Yeah, it should be. All right, here we go. So, um, obviously, <laughs> we have noticed some um, interesting mixing decisions. One of them being this phaser, which is just way too loud. Drowns out everything that's happening um, below it. And also the bass, which is supposed to be the featured part. Not the bass, where is it? Uh, uh, this one. Way too quiet, right? Okay. So we definitely have to do some mixing to make things loud and quiet. And to do that, I will go over to the mixer, or as the German interface says, the mischer. And here I have all the different tracks laid out next to one another, and I can make them quieter and louder. And that's exactly what we will be doing. So first things first, let's make the phaser, which was this whoosh, let's make that quieter just way quieter and also the sound effects let's make those a bit quieter the wind definitely 
And yeah, I think the bass a bit louder. So that's, these are my first adjustments, right? Let's have a listen through that. See if that's already better. Now you can hear the bass. Quieter. Oh, and I get a phone call. Well, that's fantastic. Not today. Um, <laughs> that was not part of the sound effects. Um, yeah, so now I can immediately tell that the um, phaser is much quieter and not as distracting. And, of course, um, the bass is much louder. But one thing that really isn't working is um, the melody. Because I don't want it to start it right away. If you listen through, uh, to the music... Can immediately hear it. I want uh, it to fade in slowly, but how could I do that? I could either go into the fade controls like this. Oh no, that's the bass. Hang on, melody, and do this. I could fade it. That would work. However, that's boring, and that wouldn't allow me to change the volume midway through the track. So instead, I will go to the mixer and use the automation controls. There are a bunch of different ways to automate a track. One of them is um, read, one of them is write, one of them is latch, and the other one is touch. So the way they work, read is just, it won't do anything. If you change the sliders, nothing will happen. Write, if you change the slider, it will write the new value of slider or the button or the whatever you did to the um, multitrack file. And you know what? Before I explain too much, let's just let's do it. Come on, let's 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 do it. So I will start with the melody all the way down. I will change it to latch, and we will play the file from the beginning, of course. Let's try it again. Now I will move the slider. Quiet again. And change back to read. So hopefully. Now, if I did everything right, we should have some automation data. And the way we can see that is if I play through the track, this slider should now move without me doing anything. Let's see if it worked. Oh, it's moving! Tony, it's moving! It's a ghost! <laughs> right, so this is how you automate a volume. You can also make the pans or left to right if we want to do it. Let's, let's do that. Why not? Um, let's pick... Uh, b -b 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 oh, this one, yeah, that's sure. So let's set it to right. Or actually latch because that's a bit better. And let's automate the pan. Back to the beginning. And put it to left. Put it to the right. Using stapler accident finger, by the way. And now if we listen to that, so let's set it back to read, let's solo it, and go back. Hopefully it should go no, no, now go to the left. Tony, you won't probably hear this because I'm not sending it in stereo to you, but the stream should hear that. Now it should be on the right. I am getting it, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. I am getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now back to the left. Amazing. Right? Automation. That's 
automation for you. So now I could go in and go through all the different sound tracks, have a listen through them individually, like, I don't know, the deep bass, make that a bit louder, a bit quieter, change the panning from left to right, and do whatever I wanted to do, um, and send that to Tony. So, um, there we are. With that, Tony, are you ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do more stuffs. Let's All do right. more stuffs. Back to Here After Effects. Hang on. Iris Wipe. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to read you a couple of things from the chat, mate, which is really good. The, awesome. the Oliver was, <laughs> was just saying, uh, someone at the BBC, um, <laughs> the phone call was from the BBC asking <laughs> if we had the book. Austin writes, hello, the Radiophonic Workshop. That was it, the BBC Radiophonic <laughs> Workshop. They did it. Now, Sandrine, I must I must be honest, you are you're giving away your age by, by, by knowing that one, but there you go. Uh, and so am I, by knowing that you know that, uh, that one. But anyway. And the number of uh, vintage synthesizers, even though they were virtual instruments, but they were used to create this. One of them being Crazy, the Mini Moog, yeah. which someday I want to get my hands on that one. Anyway, yes, um, right. back Moving to After on. Effects. But yes, uh, Adobe's Garrett. legal team currently sobbing in a corner. Says <laughs> our, all what do you mean? <laughs> why? why? Why should they? Yeah. It's totally different. It's an original composition. Yeah, it's got nothing to do By with it. Absolutely. Yeah. And our, 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 our Tony, Tony Tim Vision yeah. is actually centred in the independent People's Republic of Tononia, who don't respect copyright law anyway. <laughs> yeah they do actually uh gareth thank you gareth has just written see gareth's got everybody's back right he's, doof, he's explaining stuff he's telling me to save my project i did that while we were while we were uh while we were across the tim and i introduced a couple of other things because i wanted to make sure uh that we weren't in a position where you didn't have uh pretty much the whole thing so let me show you uh we will come back to the text layers that i've added in a moment but here is the mp4 version i've actually taken off uh the uh effect i had before and i've replaced it so before if i just go to the effect menu just here uh i had in the generate area this is the one that really uh really does eat into your uh processing power uh, just here. Uh, so I was using CC Lightburst 2.5, but I've just added CC Light Rays, which just does enough uh, for me to uh, enhance this, right? You can see it, if I just take the thing off, so I'm just using it as the default. So I'm just clicking on it here, removing it, right? Just take a look at that now. And if I re-add that, okay, like so. So if we go Effect, Generate, and come down to... Uh, CC light rays you can see it just gets a little bit of a hit around here and as I move it you'll see there's a bit more contrast Ooh. now of course we're not actually doing the original 1960s version of Dr. Woe because it didn't exist then it didn't actually start until uh, just about three hours ago three hours ago yeah that's <laughs> it so so of course it's a production in color there we are so <laughs> We're going to add some color to this as well. Now, that's another thing that we can generate. Where my this sunglasses? Me, get them on. For the color. It's not Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, what I didn't do, by the way, was bring the center of that. Uh, can you see that I'm moving this light around here? Oh, we'll use that in the next one, Tim. Oh. Um, what I can do is actually click here and then recenter the effect down in the middle there. Yeah, okay, so I can bring that in. I'm just going to bring that in down. There you can see the light rays working. Look at that. There you are. That's much better. There we are. Super good. The, uh, there we are. Nice. Super good. There we go. And also, you can probably see the thing actually play out now in more or less. In fact, it is playing in real time. So you can see that working. And that's not a bad effect, considering it's all native. Right, so I'm going to go back to the effect menu. I'm going to come down to generate. And what I want to do here is I'm going to add a four color gradient. Like so. There's my four color gradient. Now we are in the territory of Maddie just here. <laughs> Beloved uh, Maddie. So we're gonna go ahead uh, and change that a bit. I'm gonna actually bring these in a little bit tighter. So these nose like things that I'm dragging around right now uh, they're the points, they're like mesh points almost if you were an illustrator. 
Yeah, so they're changing. You can see, actually, on the rebroadcast, I'm saying we get a really bright halo around there, but don't worry. So I've got the controls just here. Okay, all of the various different controls I want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring the playhead back to the start here. And I'm going to add uh, keyframes for all of those colors. Okay, and then change them. And that is as easy as clicking on them just here and determining what color I want. So I'm going to go for something in the sort of cyan region around about there. And I like doing it this way because there's a slight variation in each one. I might go, for example, slightly more green just there. Let's back that one off just a bit so it has more chance to blend. And there, I went a bit too keen on that uh, blend. Then here down in this magenta, let's get this into sort of that cyan range, just going more towards teal uh, there. And again, just here, let's put something in like so. I then need to change the way that this blends down. Now, there are uh, quite a few blend modes. Well, there's loads of blend modes in After Effects, actually loads, loads more than Photoshop, which is why so many people do actually make the jump between uh, Photoshop and After Effects for uh, compositing. Some people do that. I've got a friend at Games Workshop, Ben, uh, who does that. Uh, there so i could change this to color in which the color is the only thing here that is applied and you can see already that has enriched that effect uh, somewhat i can take the playhead on and around about 18 seconds here maybe uh doesn't matter it's my my gig so <laughs> 18 will do for now i'm making it sound like i was doing it on purpose uh it was in the storyboard Right, so moving on. <laughs> now I'm going to take this through into the sort of magenta red range just here. So let's go through and move all of those things into those kind of colours. I think I'll keep the top just there and just back that off a little bit. Now you don't have to go with the full strength of each and every colour. Maybe so um, Gareth yeah. is asking, that's just the blending mode on the effect, not the layer, right? On the effect, yeah. Absolutely, okay. yeah. So when I'm doing it up here uh, in this panel that and, and with that actual effect, so if I collapse this for a second then expand it, that is just the effect that is accepting that blending. I could add a secondary blend by blending this layer. Now, you can either do that in the menu at the top here by going layer and blending mode from there. Now you can see how many more it's got than Photoshop. Oh, my God. Okay. Will it blend? It's a lot, right? That's yeah, got lots. Uh, but you can, if I just come down to the bottom here and toggle my switches, you can also do it from here as well. So you can change the blending mode there. So this this small toggle switches enables you to turn off what you see between those two things. But I'm just using uh, this here. And like in Photoshop, if you want to cycle through blending modes in Photoshop, I'm not making a thing for a horsey. Yeah. Uh, if you hold down shift and hit plus, that will cycle you forward through the blending modes and minus will cycle you backwards uh, through the blending modes. So, yes. So one final color adjustment just here. Adjustment. It's not an adjustment. It's an addition. I think I might make Anything that. to make it pop. That's right, Gareth. Making it pop. And just to make sure we're on the right track. I like Every this day. going, but let's just start over. Oh, no. I don't <laughs> think so. And by the way, so if, you're, are, if you're watching yeah. this on Behance today, unfortunately, the chat isn't working. Come on over to YouTube by clicking on the video title if you hover over the player right uh, there. Can ho hover over that and click on the title and you can come over to YouTube today. Did you notice how quickly I switched cups just then? Amazing. Cup came in. Right, so, good. Right, so if we watch this now transition, right, I can actually let this go in real time because we're back down into the realms of real time here, 30 seconds odd. You can see how that starts to shift. Uh, also, if I actually expanded the layer here and went to the effects yeah, and went to the four color gradient, uh, I should be getting uh, the colors in the side there, it appears I'm not. Uh, weird, don't know why, but anyway, there you go. It blends across from those things. You can see that happening over time, and I'm only adding two states there, yeah, but I could add as many really as I wanted, and it will just swap out those colors over time. So uh, next then with uh, our vortex here, and I've strangely ended up uh, bringing this all together 
uh, in the wrong comp, but that's fine. I can deal with that. It's not a problem. Let me just show you also what I did with the earlier one here. Oh, I can't because I've, I've hidden it now. But um, all I did was I changed this region here. So you see this? This is the work area, like so. So I moved all of the keyframes backwards. And here's a trick in After Effects. If you want to just scale them down proportionally, so I had 10 times as much time as I needed, I selected all of the keyframes, just dragged across them all. Then I went to the one, the rightmost one, the one at the furthest end of the timeline, and dragged them backwards, holding down the Alt or Option key, and that scales down the spacing in between the frames. I brought them down, and then I brought in the work area here to the time that I actually wanted, okay? And then I trimmed the composition to that work area like so. So if I went uh, trim comp to work area, yeah, then it trimmed that back down. So it was resolved uh, pretty quickly, and I don't know where my head was at. Uh, first thing, well, I do. It was spinning around with loads of other stuff. But anyway, there you are. So there you are. Is that reverb mic? You could add, I could add an adjustment layer as well, reverb mic. You are absolutely correct. Nothing wrong with that. That's very Photoshoppy. Um, but yeah, no, there's various advantages to doing that as well because it hasn't got to calculate stuff underneath. But anyway, not to worry. Uh, so now we've got those things just there. It's time to introduce some text. And so what we're going to need to be able to see is the title of Dr. Woe. See, Dr. Woe. Uh, <laughs> see, it's uh, it's nothing like any other television property at all. No, it's got some letters. <laughs> it's got some letters in common, right? But that's about it. <laughs> so, uh, well, I need this to come in. Uh, let's go ahead and play this through. I need this through at about eight seconds, I guess. Uh, from here. Now I could trim back uh, this layer. There's a couple of ways I can do that. I can either drag it back like so, or my favorite way is just to do shift command or shift control D to split those at that particular point and then delete the bit I don't actually want. Right. So uh, now while that's actually uh, there, it's going to take a second and a half to end up in this particular point, And then it's going to fade out after a bit. And to do that, I'm going to turn this into a, a 3D space object. Okay, so to do that, I've got this small checkbox just here, okay, aligned with this one that looks like a cube to change it into a 3D layer. Uh, it doesn't make it 3D, it just means that it understands the Z index, that's the one to and from uh, the camera just there. And then I can transform it. Okay, so if I select it, just here, you'll notice that in newer versions of, of uh, After Effects, you've got this gizmo uh, just here, which allows you to effect transformations in 3D space. And I'm gonna also twirl open the effects here and twirl open my transforms because I've got X rotation. Yeah, so rotation on the X axis, check. I've got Y rotation, rotation on the Y axis, check, and Z rotation for rotation on that axis. And I've keyframed all three just for the moment. So if I rotate on the X axis, you can see it's doing that. And that's pretty much where I want it to be right now. So I'll undo that to there and plot a keyframe. So I've now got a keyframe uh, for that or should have, there we are, we have. And then I'm gonna wind backwards to the in point. So I'll tap I on my keyboard to get to the in point. And then I'm gonna rotate this back like so, so it's more or less flat. And then using the gizmo, if I want to, I could just go ahead here, okay, and move that around. I could also move it back in space, but I could also change the position here. And because this is a 3D object or 3D space object, I've got X, Y, and Z. So on the Z axis, I'm going to increase the number here, like so, I'm just dragging with stapler accent finger a few times. And so what should happen now is that should start to transform. I didn't keyframe that, so that's fine. I can go back to there, oh, lordy, lordy, and add uh, a keyframe. So I'll do it from the beginning, actually. There we go. I don't know what is wrong with me today. Not firing. There we are on all cylinders. So I'll bring that back up like so. Okay, now I'll bring that back to zero, which is easy. So it's in exactly the right place. Now, if I move between those things, you can see how that jumps up like so and into place. 
Now, I actually want it to stay there for a few seconds, okay, or just for maybe one or two just there. So I'll wound on a little bit, and I'm going to add another keyframe at that point for all of the things that have uh, their properties changed just here, like so. Okay, so one for each of those, even though two of them aren't technically being used at the moment. And then I'll go along, okay, and what I'm going to do here is simply fade this out. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the previous set of keyframes. I'm going to tap T on my keyboard, which gets me to opacity, transparency, opacity, two sides of the same coin, like so, well, sort of. And I'll click the keyframe for that. So I'm adding a keyframe there where that is 100% opaque. Now I'm going to tap U on my keyboard. I know this sounds like a lot of shortcuts, but I'm kind of hoping that you'll watch it back and you'll try these things out. That way you'll be able to use these ones uh, yourself. Okay. So what I'm going to do, now I can see all of those things. U just exposes every property there that has been changed, that has been keyframed or modified. Uh, or key, well, keyframe really. Uh, so I've got the opacity just there. I'm going to wind back to the earlier keyframe and add a keyframe there as well, just by clicking on the diamond just here. Then just after the forward motion of that starts, I'm going to drop this down to zero, like so. And then in the timeline here, just going to hit Command C or Control C to copy that frame and then wind it back. Okay, and then just change the opacity there just by doing command v so it's now dropped that in so it just sits there comes in like that what i should have done maybe is make that bigger so it came out of the screen i think i would have done but i'm just keeping an eye on the time so we've got minutes. that <laughs> 20 minutes 28 <gasps> oh 28 <sighs> plus 10 minutes of overtime of course oh yeah of course that's all right Steve's here, Steve Kosovim. Hi, steve hello and of course if the music is oh. below that it will look much Better. Mm -hmm. Carl's saying that as a professional AA user, I can safely say that AE struggles. Now multi-threaded support to make use of power seeds we use evolved AE is still behind. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe you might. Quite possibly. I thought it did multi-thread. Maybe it doesn't now. Okay, good. Right, well, there we go. So right, moving on. All right, I've got that going like that. I think, do you know what? I am tempted to do that scale from that particular point there. So I'm going to tap S to access scale because it's a property that I have not yet changed. So I'm gonna click that so it's exactly where it is now. I can tap U again so I can see everything here. And then I'm gonna wind forward to just before this becomes invisible. And I'm gonna increase the scale. All three of these things are linked. So I'm just gonna go like that. So it's as if you're now going through the text, you're passing it really, really quickly in the vortex. So if we run that, you can see in that space of time that that disappears. We've got a couple of other bits of text just here. So we've got the name of the star of this show. <gasps> it's the German heartthrob, Tim Mürbest. He's the best. <laughs> He's the best. We were going to have something that looked like some sort of time travel device. I've got to point this out. But I thought it would be funny if it was a small portable toilet, yeah. But that would raise questions about why we were both using the same portable toilet to travel around in. So that wasn't allowed. Then I suggested using a three-wheeled yellow vehicle, but that apparently belongs to some other property that somebody has. So we couldn't use that one either. So anyway, said, fine, we don't even need something to time travel in. We can do it without you. Instead, we got this. You have to Instead. activate it by doing this. Doink. <laughs> so now we're on with, with our star just here. So we've got starring Tim Mervis. So we should ought to bring that in. And I'm thinking that that could kind of be a 3D thing as well. Okay, so we'll make that 3D. I could also trim that back to about this point here as well, because that's where it's all going to start uh, just there. So I'm going to use my favorite method of doing that. Uh, just by shift command or shift control d uh, let's go ahead now uh, so after a short moment just there what i'm going to do is now this is enabled for 3d is go ahead and click on it so i've got my properties here and this is the state i actually want it to be in so i'm going to go to the transforms and just to be on the safe side i am going to allow all of those things in fact this time i'm going to do, even do scale uh, on there as well 
Right, so I want to rotate this around. I'm going to use the gizmo this time. So I'm going over this green uh, thing here, which is going to change on the Y axis like so. Whoops, Daisy, let's go back to the uh, actual in point there first, tone. So I'm going to use the gizmo and spin that around like so, which makes it really easy to do. Uh, when you're uh, doing these things, by the way, if you're not used to these sort of widgets or gizmos, depending on how you want to call it, called widgets in some things, gizmos in others, um, RGB, okay, XYZ, they're not the same thing. They're completely different things. One is a coordinate system. The other is a transformation. Very but helpful. Thank if you. You're, if you're wondering which one is which, R is the X axis, right? G is the Y axis and B is the Z axis. So and I suppose you always have the gizmo in the lower left corner of the viewport. But next to the... Uh, you have this one here as well, yeah, but that's the camera gizmo. Ooh. It's colours are still not right. The not the object. Yeah, they're still exactly the same. Still, yeah, for any of those things. And that carries on in 3D softwares as well as, as this as well. Uh, so translation, which is the way of moving things, yeah, you can use translation across those axes so you can see there that I'm moving that in a different direction there. So you could do that in any one of those things. If you're not seeing, by the way, the widget you actually want. At the top here, you can focus on the widgets you want. So you've got here, at the moment, I'm using the universal widget, but you can use the scale widget there as well and position or translation as well. So I think what I'm going to do is just scale that down a wee bit like so, and I'll actually use the controls here. I ought to, uh, ought to keyframe position thinking about it as well. If I go forward to the next thing just here and then back to the earlier one, see that was a quick save tone. Uh, let me just, just double check I did that. No, I did. There we are. Good. And Gareth cool. asks, couldn't we extrude the text in 3D using the Cinema 4D Lite plugin? Well, yeah. We could, but that's not on today's today's menu. That would require switching render engines, I believe. Yes, it would. Yeah. And yeah, that's a bit different too much for now. Yeah. So I'm going to, yeah, we need to keep this one simple, Gareth. Um, at the moment. I know you'd love to go ahead and play with all sorts of stuff, but we do need to keep this one fairly simple. Uh, for the peeps that are watching. So this one will now come in like so. Okay, and then we want to swing this back into place at this keyframe because I clearly did not um, actually go ahead and change uh, those things just there. But anyway, there we are. So I might just do that and widget this around just a little bit. There we are. Whoops, a daisy. Uh, you can also <laughs> hold down shift to lock these things. There we are, like that. So that's now doing the right stuff from there. What we then need is some footage of our star, our hero. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. We're going back. We're going back to the uh, yeah. We're going back to the eleven o'clock this morning version of, of Doctor Wo. Yeah. So oh. we're gonna go back to the project. I don't just like this here. part. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. You do. I'm just having a quick look here. Actually, uh, oh, there's lots of stuff. Oh, oh, we're talking about coronavirus now. Let's avoid that in the chat. Let's keep that out of the way. Right. <laughs> the lethal weapon font. Yes. I've got the one from Battlestar Galactica earlier. I mean, uh, some other TV <laughs> series. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to bring in uh, some footage. I thought I brought that in here. Oh, no, it was in the pre-roll thing. Uh, so I'm going to bring this in. Uh -huh. I wonder if I can rename that from here. Let's just call that Tim Say. Which one will you use? I hope the darkest one, because it's uh, more dramatic. If not, that's fine too. But no, I want I want this one um, oh, okay. because of just stuff. I want this one. I want, <laughs> sorry, mate. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. The, what is, this is the one I want to use. Well, basically, Tony just asked me, could you film yourself a bit? Just looking, <laughs> <about> pondering <laughs> into the distance. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I have no idea just what you're doing. Just film yourself a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I've like, got oh. some stuff here. That's that's pretty much. Just looking. Yeah. Just look as if. If you're pondering some sort of alien world and you did a good job of it, I liked this because it got beard stroking in it. <laughs> it's me. Tim did that. It's Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go with that one. I like the side to side thing there. So I'm actually going to trim that at that particular point just there, and then bring this hopefully. Well, now you know why I'm not an actor. You can book me now. My agent is. <laughs> so let's get you across here just a bit because you're going to need to be in this sort of region holding out shift so you move at the same thing and of course you're in 
I don't want that green screen uh, stuff there. Oh, really? Uh, you know, no, no, no. <sighs> yeah, so I'm going to call for my key light. Yeah, so I am looking for the key light. There we are, key light 1.2. I'm going to drag that on there. So that now opens up in the thing here. I'm going to hit the eyedropper and I'm going to hit the green screen just there. Now I need to expand the gain on that a little bit because you can see a little bit of a border around there. So I'm just going to push the gain up slightly. There we go. I don't want to go too far because you start eating into Tim's hair. Look, it's pulsating now. <laughs> well, that's where I can finally get a haircut. I woke up this morning with pulsating hair. <laughs> Five pounds. Five pounds. Ka-chunk. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. Oh, do you know when we did the uh, the the working through version of this, the one we do before we show anything? I did. Um, I actually blended you with the background, but I'm actually I'm I'm not going to do that now because I kind of like it the way it is. I think it looks really good. Perhaps even some color grading, just colder. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. By the way, um, there is also one way if you want to remove some of the uh, green spill on my. My skin, there is in the right hand side on the effects and presets, there is key light dot 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 pill suppressor, which is supposed to say, oh, the third one from the top, it's already there. No, no. Oh, was it already there? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Ah. This one automatically adds key light and some effects to reduce um, spill and, yeah, key artifacts. So that, this so is nice. a great way to um, get it all in one go if you don't want to add it manually. See, top tips from Tim say. <laughs> I think I accidentally just deleted both. I did. Uh, let me just go ahead and go back to that. Right. Anyway, we're not worried. We're not too worried about that. This one. Uh, so uh, switch to status so you can see the blue moth clip with Iron Ninja. Not right now, Gareth. Doing stuff. Got other stuff to get in. I'm due in here shortly. Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to move away from that a little bit, like so. Okay, and we should be towards the end of your. Oh, I haven't done the out footage on your, on your name. So we'll go to. I don't want you going out of shot like that. So we'll go to about this point here. Yeah. Then we'll go ahead and do that. Trim that bit away. The footage is all still there, uh, and I can go ahead and reveal some of that, just like you do in a premiere timeline if you want to do that. But uh, what I'm going to do here now is while this is fading in, so I'm going to get to about this point here where you can read it. T, whoops, T just there to do that and opacity 100%. I was at the end point. Man, oh man. T for opacity. Opacity. Also, I've got the clip on when we're around because I'm watching Gareth's uh, stuff on here. Every time I see a little bit of red out of the corner of my eye, I know that Tim has tagged me <laughs> in the chat, which is a good way to get my attention. But anyway, right. So at this point here, Right, with this, uh, I'm going to tap T. So I've got my opacity. I've keyframed that. I'm going to tap I just there. I'm going to click on that one. I, I used to use stapler accident finger, but then found out that when I was doing that, I quite often just went to three or four percent. And I'd be watching it back and thinking, I'm sure there's a ghost of that on there. And lo and behold, <laughs> there was a ghost on there. And thanks for that, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> cheeky monkey so here i'm going to copy those frames i'm going to move along i'm going to paste those frames i'm going to use the keyframe assistant again so right click keyframe assistant time reverse keyframes and then bring those back in like that so now you'll fade out at that no. so yes you will i'm also going to do that here let's see if that i think if i do that here i'm going to end up with a little bit of bounce you know but we'll go with it anyway okay i'll just paste those down just there and time reverse those as well. I reckon that is going to bounce. We'll see. Hmm. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to fade that whole lot out. So let's do that. We'll go to uh, opacity. We'll go to that point there. We'll scale and opaque and make those bigger and less opaque there. So we'll add a keyframe for opacity. I've got all of those things selected. So now I've got them all done, not to worry. And we will go to the out point O uh, of this, uh, of course, that clip's right up there. So we'll go to this point here and we'll make sure that all of those things aren't active. We'll go back to the opacity, drop down to zero. And we'll also increase the scale. 
And Gareth says strap. Yeah. Scale, transparency, rotation, anchor, position. Strap. That's very good. Do an RS wipe quickly, Tim. Oh, God. Just uh, so that... No, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, so there we are. We've got that in there. Now, of course, Dr. Woe never travels anywhere in time, space, or viscous liquid. <laughs> Without, without his trusty assistant, Nitwit. Yeah. So let's bring uh, Nitwit in. Just for a minute, I was just to grab a drink. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm using all the transition that OBS has to offer. <laughs> exactly. So let's bring the uh, stuff on for here. Of course, I'm on the opposite side here now. I know I could just switch a load of those things over but just so people kind of get uh where it's going on we're going to do it this way anyway <laughs> like i said i know some of you oh, hopefully some of the, the i know people that use after effects that get stuff all the time just like oh, i didn't know it did that and it might be a simple thing like tapping f for feather yeah i know loads of after effects people that don't uh that or i've known loads of after effects people that don't know that so hopefully the after effects people are getting something from it uh too my favorite, uh, so one is, I need to, my favorite one is hitting you twice. Shows all the use key you, things. You. You, you. Yes, you, you. You, you. Absolutely. W. Right. 3D space, yeah, yeah. Ding, <laughs> Ding dong. dong. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead here and I am going to add keyframes for position, scale, uh, not orientation. Uh, well, I should do really. Uh, X, Y, and Z, and opacity. Like so, so that's ready at that particular point. Uh, do you know what? I set a keyframe for everything apart from the anchor point uh, just there. And we're going to take I to go to the beginning there. Now I'm going to use my gizmo uh, again just here. I don't want to be in the type tool. I want to be in that. So I'm going to spin this around like that. Okay, and now move this backwards. So I'm going to use the two things here. So you have to think, imagine like it's playing like a 19... 90s game of snake on a old Nokia phone. Yeah. <laughs> Moving it that way. There we go. So Tony Tangent. And then we'll just go ahead and change the opacity. Uh, so here, again, zero. Boof. Like that. So that fades in pretty quickly going to go for a slightly lesser amount of time for me because after all i'm only the co-star for this one sad i know so humble <laughs> that's how i know you i know I, I am i'm i'm as modest as you are mer best tumbleweed <laughs> oh, hang on <laughs> I should have used the other one. Anyway. Yeah, moving on. Right, <laughs> zero. So we know that that's fading out just there. And let's make that also big. We'll make it big in both places. And it can just, I'm just, I'm just going to drag it over there. There we go. That'll do. So that comes in. And goes like that, just there. Super good. I also have done this with the soundtrack actually in Tim, to be perfectly, uh, to be perfectly honest. But you know, hey ho! After this morning, if you saw the chaos over there, you'd understand what I was talking about. Uh, right, those things are done. So what we need now is the footage, which I actually prepped earlier on. I actually keyed this one out earlier, so it is Nitwit. Just there, so we'll drag in Nitwit on top, and we'll go back to <laughs> so that particular point so this is typical nitwit honestly yeah well how did we do yours tim did we fade you in yeah we did right so i'll just go here let's go you you here we are Ooh. super good and we'll take this back to that particular point and by then you can actually scale that down a bit as well 
thinking about it. It's too big. And that key needs a little bit of work as well. Let's just go ahead and go to the properties. Oh, that's comp. So I need to double click, go into that. So here's the actual footage. And let's just bump up that gain a little bit, just for the minute. And back to, oh man, there we are. Where are my vortex just here? That'll do, that's fine. Well, there's no such thing as that'll do, but there is today. Normally not, uh, but that. So scale is all good. So I'm gonna T for opacity here. Let's keyframe that. Let's go I and then make that zero there like so, sorry. And then we'll go ahead a bit to here, add another keyframe for that. And just bring that forward. I'm gonna go back, so I don't think I was quite over that keyframe. <laughs> is that a flat What's jack up? or a tiny brick? No, it's actually a normal sized brick, but Tony's just really, really big, you know? Oh, gigantic. Yeah, there we go, fading in. <laughs> it actually works quite well, you know. Do you know what? I am going to move that lot forward because I did go for roughly the same timing as you because I think that's a good way for that to fade. <laughs> just there like so. I'm not sure if something's gone completely wacky with the textures there. No, that's working all right. And notice that, that I'd actually taken a bite out of <laughs> <laughs> but I was hungry when, when <laughs> the catering on so, that ship uh, was terrible couldn't even oh man anything. really bad but I'd opened it and it was there I thought oh they might not know what this is because it's it's kind of you know it's like brick shaped um but then I was doing it and I had <laughs> the second I was oh my god I'm so hungry so but no no one will know <laughs> and then a bit later on I can show you Actually, if I go back to the actual footage uh, just here, oh no, because I've trimmed it out, but um, let me just make that longer just for a second, just so you can see. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I, I turned it around. I mean, that's so a screenshot right the there. <laughs> it's my new profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> I will change so up from there for this month. Anyway, class. right. What I'm uh, what I'm actually going to do now is uh, I'm doing this the other way around. So I'm kind of thinking my way around it. I think I'm actually going to bring uh, the space comp in over the top here. So if I just go ahead and get that, and then just bring that in on the top like so. Okay, so we've got the space thing moving away like so, and then we need to move through to the vortex. So basically, all I'm gonna do basically here is go ahead and, uh, and keyframe that transparency, I think, to make that work. So we'll go from 100, we'll just wind on a little bit and make that zero about there. So we should then see through to the vortex. So we're getting the same thing. And if I, actually, do you Whoa. know what, that works better. That works better that way. I kind of like that. Yeah, so it's rushing away, rendering ahead on there um yeah so that works so let's see if we've got the mp3 in here did i bring that in no i didn't so i'll go fetch it now and hopefully this will work so if we bring that in little audio layer here <laughs> and let's just give that a run shall we Of course, there is one thing. Uh, Do you know what? There's one. Th Those sound what? effects was. They were actually quite well timed, mate. They were working brilliantly. That's why yesterday <laughs> when I was out and you sent you sent me you sent me your uh, your initial idea for the composition, I was so excited. <laughs> but uh, what we haven't done, Gareth, I hope you're still here. <gasps> yeah, please let us know you're still here. <laughs> um, 
the uh, what we haven't got is the title of this particular episode. Yeah. Any more After Effects classes planned the design ninja or will it never darken your... Actually, no. Do you know what? I want to do... I wouldn't mind doing some title reimaginings every now and then because Tim and I have talked about a couple of other things we might do and involve ourselves in, such as an 80s private investigator style thing and a classic detective thing. Yeah. Something like that, maybe. There we go. That's, yeah, that's a little bit close, that one. <laughs> Oh. There we go. What's better? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, moving on, moving on, moving on. I'm going to create another type layer here, and I'm going to make sure that I'm aligned to the center, which I am. Also, going to uh, change this back to medium. Now, I don't know if you noticed that, but I did make some distinction here. So, using the same uh, typeface, but different members of the family. So, the titles, okay, are in medium, and then the acting credits are in medium oblique. That's the distinction Acting. we made here. So what we need now is we need that piece of episode footage. If we get, if we do get a minute, well, we're unlikely to. I could actually stick a flare in the middle of that, but it wouldn't be the one I prefer. I prefer doing that from Red Giant, but or although it's all Max on now, as I'm sure a lot of people know. <gasps> no, it's not. Uh, it's not that program. Um, Sandrine, it just sounded a little bit like that, but it's nothing like that at all. <laughs> it's totally different. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, completely different. Uh, so anyway, moving on, uh, let's just change the size of this. Let's bring this down to something like that and type. Uh, let's pretend we're doing a mid-season uh, episode here. Oh, I've actually gone. Let me just lock these other type players because it thinks I want to interact with those. I think I might have just bent that. Let's have a quick look. No, I didn't. Right, so I'm going to add a new type player just here. I'm going to put episode, episode, <laughs> episode uh, 341. Well, I like that one. That's a classic. Yeah, it's a good one. We need more lens flare, JJ Abrams. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We could we could whack all of that stuff in. Um, but there you go. No, it's who said mention that? It's not that Gareth. It sounds a bit like that, but it's nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's our jobs here, guys. It's our job. <laughs> it's it's our jobs, right? So there we go. We're going to have that uh, popping in, like so, towards the end here somewhere around about there uh, and then we'll just leave it over to the other editors to dip that to black so we're just going to go ahead and let's make that one 3d here as well so we do do that uh, and then we'll just do some straightforward offsetting here as well so let's go for the transforms let's put one on everything even the anchor point why not and there we go super good Right, so they've all got a keyframe on. They're in the right place. Uh, this then, we're going to send this backwards. So we're going to send it backwards on the Z axis here. Whoosh. Scroll away, tone. Scroll away. Whew. Now, I ought to just enter a value of 10,000 in there, really. Like that. Boom. So that's all the way back. And we'll drop that also down a little way as well. Yeah, so pop that down so it's coming out of the vortex. We're going to fade that in from that point. Okay, so now we're going to go with our opacity just here. I don't think I gave opacity a keyframe previously. So what I'm using here, by the way, on the left-hand side, I can navigate between previous and next keyframes using the arrows. So what it, where I made the playhead or the CTI jump just there, I used one of the things that did have a keyframe at that particular point in time and move the playhead to that point. Uh, it does have a diamond there for opacity. So now I can move back to the previous keyframe here for position. And we can go ahead now and change the opacity there to zero, like so. So that is now fading in there, like so. Welcome to the Reality Asylum. 
and I think that'll be all right. Just to just so we've got a nice little fade out on it, I'm going to cheat like mad, right, and add a solid over the top. Perfect. Yeah, like that. There we are. So I'm just going to drop that on. I am going to go to the end point here, or actually even go to that point there. So it fades out nice and softly. And we'll do that. So I'm just basically dropping a black card on top of it effectively yeah, and saying at that particular point, it'd be fully opaque. At this point, it will not be. Are we ready for a roll, Tim, do you think? Shall uh, we go for a roll? Yes. Let's do it. Ready. Here we go. And in fact, what I'm going to even do is do that so you can see it in big. Here we go. Well, that was kind of good short slightly. I think the soundtrack is a bit too long for that, but I can change that later on. That's, that's fine. We could do that. And what we could do is we could then print that and uh, to obviously to file, not out of a printer frame by frame. <laughs> but we can print that and uh, we can drop that onto the Discord, which don't forget we have our very own Discord where the chat can continue. We can chat long and long, all day and all night, if you like. Well, I can't because I've got my lunch waiting. And as mentioned earlier, <laughs> I already the hungry. <laughs> but there we are. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Did Gareth enjoy it? Is Gareth still here? Gareth's doing an applauding thing. So that's good. Thank you. Tony looks like one of those clueless rabbits in that horrible animation film. <laughs> People have said that to me before, you know, just in case you missed it, Sandrine. I showed my new production hat today. It shows how happy I am to see you here in the audience. <laughs> I need to get some hats, you know. Anyway. <laughs> Just something. <laughs> You're uh, so good. So, so good. Uh, I know the film you meant, um, um, uh, um, Sandrine, but uh, I, I couldn't say that out loud. Not allowed. <laughs> Watch and also, down. thank you, everybody who's watching um, on Behance yes. or on YouTube today. Um, we were chatting on YouTube, just in case you missed it. But um, right on Friday, we will actually be back with another stream. Hang on. Whoosh. Portrait photography with Sophia and Tara. Oh, so it's that, Sophia! Yes. And uh, that will be really fun. And if you missed it, uh, this Monday, Ron Timmerhin and Joe Allen talked about photography. This was also great. Um, Ron told us how he edits his images and how he applies his Ron source, which was a preset filter, which I really liked. So, um, hang on. Iris wipe. <laughs> so, right, thank you very so much. Uh, Tim and I will... Yes, thank you, everyone. Tim and I will get at some point Hopefully today we'll we'll just add a couple of little bits into that and finesse it a little bit and then we'll we'll pop it into Discord and uh, yeah. But I'm just feeling but looking you know, forward to seeing you next time. If we do another one, I don't know. We would need a great topic, a great theme. No, anything like that with that sound. I really like this one. You know. Yeah. We'll have to think about that. Yeah, that's 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 the one we need. Yeah, we'd think about that. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Okay. Well then, I think that's everything. Um, <laughs> Take care, everyone. We wanted to show today. So, um, see you on Friday, or if you're watching the German stream, see you in um, two hours. Well then, from all of us over here, have a great day. Have a great rest of your week, and bye, Iris Wipe. Take care. See. You.